Good morning. This morning, it's lovely and sunny out. Hopefully it won't be quite as warm as yesterday. It's not forecast to be. And I hope you're all doing well and fine. But this morning I thought I'd have a look through some things I've been doing in my sketchbook. Okay. Um, not too much has been added since this, I showed you last a couple of weeks ago. But I've been trying some things out because obviously my mind has been turning to going out drawing and getting that, um, getting over some social anxiety to be able to do that. But I'm going to have to go out late or early in the day, not during the middle of the day because it's too bright, too sunny and what have you. And I'm still not comfortable with going indoors in places, but we'll see what happens. So this is my sketchbook and I've got some swatches at the front. These of draw the Derwent drawing pencils. Oh, that was just a, a drawing I did in um, coloured I think it was either an Arteza or a Zebra vintage colour pen because I wanted to see what line tone on line, the same kind of colour of line on paper would look like a different tone of there. This one you've seen which is all kinds of um, coloured charcoal and the Derwent colour soft and the Derwent drawing pencils. Swatches of the drawing pencils because I really like them and their colour palette. Then I've got some, this is the, so if on this side, is the one that I was working on yesterday, trying out different water-based media on the Canson Imagine paper. So this is Ink Tents, this is the Mission Gold watercolours. I'm really just, I say disappointed, I shouldn't be surprised that the colours have muted down on this paper, because it's not meant strictly for watercolour, it is mixed media. But these... Um, the Zig Clean Colour Brush Pens and the Tombow Dual Brush Pens. Oh my goodness, I love it. So vibrant, so bright, and that's the kinds of colours I like. I like vintagey ones as well. But this is another, it's a pen drawing, but I've also added some pencil bits down here that I'd started colouring in the Derwent Colour Soft. So these here, these here, um, think the brown bits there were, which here if I didn't mention that, are the Derwent Colour Soft, but these and these round here and was it up here? There was some Colour Soft up there, but I used the, um, do I use Clean Colour? No, I used the Clean Colour ones down here. But here were the Tombow um, dual brush pens with a, a damp water brush and they go out really lovely on this paper. This is the Fabriano tone paper which I think, if I remember rightly, should have looked it up, I think it's part cotton and it takes water, damp water really well. With some of these I added the colour again a couple of times and spread it out with water and the paper surface hasn't been damaged. What I've also just started doing, I don't know if you can see on the ones here, see how the tips look that little bit lighter and brighter? I thought I, I want that whiteness because it, I'm about both bright colours but I also like contrasting colours to give a sense of depth and dimension. And I thought I need white and so I got a one of the Derwent drawing pencils out, the white one obviously, and I did that and I've used um, a blender pencil again from Derwent just to smooth it out a little bit and then add some more white on the top of that smoother layer just to intensify the white. And again I've just put some white here, here and here just to brighten those tips up. So I'm not sure whether it's more noticeable on the camera or it is to my eyes, but either way I really quite like it. So this is the um, clay, yeah clay toned paper which is quite grey. So I've you know tried bright colours and so on obviously because the the um, the Tombows and the Zigs are translucent colours. That grey influences the shade they come out so it tones it down and you get that vintagey shade almost again which, um, but still quite bright, you know, some of them aren't that much dulled down in many ways. But lovely, lovely, lovely fun to work on. So last night, 
I thought, okay, let me try and work out here. Let me just move that down a little bit for you. Let me try and work out the kinds of colours that would work in harmony that are, um, is it anal and they're analogous colours, colours close to each other on the colour wheel. So these are the, the Zig Clean Colour pens and I've put swatches here to remind me of what they were because I thought, yeah, sketchbook, let's do this. I've got olive green, which is a, well, it's an olive green. Pale dawn grey, which is really pale, but in the areas where I've used it, I've been able to go in and add some extra colour and intensify it and, you know, smooth it out. So that's really lovely. Deep blue is that nice counterpoint to it. And I thought I had a green grey. I couldn't find it last night, but I did this morning. So there's there's no green grey in this yet, but there will be. It's, a, it's almost a darker version of the pale dawn grey. But I have started adding white colour pencil to get those highlights there and that that sense of volume and dimension even more. So I'll, I'll continue to do that. But I've just started on a different... I'll take, yeah, I'll take this out for now. Disc bound, so easy to take things out. Pop that over there. And you can see I've swatched a lot of browns out here. And um, even, even the deep red, because I thought I'd, I like red with these orangey warm browns. There's some cool browns there. I just wanted to see what they were like. So I've just started doing some adding colour here. I'm going to continue. Um, but I've added some white as well. And these ones do look a bit heavy handed, but it's something I will learn and develop. So you just put the pencils out, out of the way so they don't roll around and continue to add this. So this is, you know, my mind is ticking through things as it does um, in its own sweet way and own sweet time. And it's about trying, this is about trying to find, you know, a really, really basic set of colours to take in a pencil case with me. But I think I'm going to have to decide what colour paper I take because otherwise I'll be taking loads and loads of different colours. And that, that defeats the object of travelling light and always having a small selection of supplies with me. So um, it's definitely on my mind, which is why I'm doing this. And I quite like working in monochrome anyway. Or relative monochrome. The nice thing about this paper is that I can I can use a slightly damper brush than with the cancer and these work really nicely on the paper I do have to say that it's um it is really pleasant to work with. And I mean that. Absolutely lovely, this. Obviously, you know, it's... Watercolour paper is fabulous. Get me wrong. But it's also very bright coloured and in sunshine or in bright lights. My eyes don't like the reflection off bright white, especially as I need to wear glasses to draw. I haven't got a set of reading glasses that have, um, I prefer Polaroid um, glasses. I've got, I've got a set of distance glasses that have got these, um, you know, the ones that automatically darken and light the coating which is lovely because it does tone down light, but it doesn't stop the glare still. So I've got a couple of pairs of distance glasses. They've got Polaroid um, lenses over them and I need to, I'm sure you can get prescription ones. So and I'm due an eye test soon, so I'll be looking into that. But of course, um, the perfect solution to glare off white paper 
is not to use white paper. So toned paper, coloured paper like this, or paper that's been coloured with, say, distress inks, will be perfect. A bit dark here today, aren't we? Put the other light on. Um, yeah, there we go. Should have checked that first, but hey-ho. Tell you what, sunlight streaming in, that's the problem as well. But um, this is all quite... It's all quite a lovely lovely thing to do so where was I oh yeah wittering about sunglasses and colored paper so these toned papers are fantastic and I think I'm going to be ordering a pack of the blue the, I think it's called ocean and then I'll have one at least one of each of the colors See how they just spread out so easily here. They really are lovely. So a small selection of these in a pencil case popped in my bag along with a drawing pencil, a pen, because I, you know, I'm still going to sit and draw in pen. And, um, did I say white pencil, these? Oh, and the white pencil and blender would be perfect, I think. Possibly a white gel pen. Possibly, very possibly, only possibly, um, some meta a metallic pen, which would be fun. Or even a metallic pencil or two, because I do have some. Don't use them often, but they could be interesting. But it, they were always something I'd have in my my sketching kit years ago. I'd often have a black paper sketchbook with me because that's how it works. So this is. Um, This is something I'm really, 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 really enjoying. I think you can tell. So I'm back to it today. But in a different context. And I'm happy to share my experiments, my experiments or explorations. I'm not sure. Perhaps a bit of both. I will eventually work out what media I really like and need to keep in my collection and which ones need to go. Ink tents, colour soft, the um the zig pens. Tombos I think until they run out. They actually work quite nicely on this paper, much nicer than on the Canson paper. So, and they've got some nice colours in them. Because I, I do have trouble mixing colour. The Mission Gold watercolours are staying. And perhaps the Phoenix ones. But the others I'll find new homes for because they're not really, really me at all. Um, I know my young niece is, or oh, my great niece, grand niece is into art and I think she may appreciate them so as they're practically brand new fairly used so I shall have to try and remember to ask my my niece if, if um, her daughter would like them and that would be quite nice and I've got watercolour paper that I'm not fussed on that other people rave about but it doesn't suit the way I work and it would be quite nice for her I think. Hmm. 
you don't have to have you know really expensive products to produce really good art and have you ever seen any of the ballpoint pen art that people do my goodness the humble ball big ballpoint pen you can't get much cheaper than that where pens are concerned but the artwork that people produce with it is absolutely amazing so it's about how you use your materials and recognizing the limitations or what suits your style so i'm not a snob in terms of um pricing things i have in the past been easily swayed by reviews on youtube and people raving about things that's how i ended up with these zigs and, and the tombos and um, other stuff like distress inks and so on in my days of looking at um, crafting videos card making videos particularly and I used to they, there was a craft shop that was very close um, well it wasn't quite on my way home but it was close enough that I could pop in there from work and just have a mooch around looking for materials I think I discovered it when I was doing a level art and used to go there for the materials for um I did, I did quite a bit of textile um stuff using felt and um metallics and all sorts of things beads and goodness knows what to create abstract art some of them are on my deviant art site still but i haven't done that for ages although i've still got all the supplies lurking in my home so i could quite easily um Take it up again and occasionally i think of that because i used to really enjoy it and i think i might actually you know but uh i think i get frustrated with it the slowness of it and the finickettiness that it can be yeah so but anyway this craft shop it always had new stuff coming in and of course i go oh that looks interesting they'd have samples on all done to entice you to buy and uh, yeah and i'm not very good at resisting impulses at times and um, so I'd buy it, try it and see what happens and then of course there was the mixed media and art journals with the thing and I had to have a go at that because again what people did was beautiful and I thought oh and no matter what I tried you know I had fun with mixed media a friend of mine has got um, a piece of mixed media art that's full of cobs and very vintage and um, really complex and deep backgrounds, you know, with layers of colour and iridescence and metallic and so on. And this really isn't very good. I think I know why. Let's try this way. It's like, oh, it's a bit better, isn't it? Just a bit. Not much. <laughs> At least you can see what I'm doing, maybe. I don't know. I'm having a day of it already. Um... So I'd try all of these things out and, um, you know, I've still got a lot of the stuff that I did. I did gift a lot of the crafting you know, stuff away, like the die cutting machine and embossing folders and stamp sets and um, some inks and, and other things that I, I just never used. And of course, about six months after I did that, I felt I needed a, a die cutting machine again. So I bought another one. Which I've still got, I've rarely used, but I have got just some basic dies and basic shapes here, um, which I bought to make cards and things, which I occasionally do do. But I've got a stash of them and I never send them. So, as I've said, there is absolutely no hope for me, to be honest. Um, I don't know why the colour is so bizarre today. I'm sure you'll cope though. So I'm going to just go to this. I mean, it's. It's all in its way, it is just really interesting and has been an interesting journey, that's for sure, and will continue to be so because there's always new things to discover to do. With the media you have, papers and combinations and styles and it's a never-ending process of learning and 
discovery. And some people are far more creative with what they do with things and how they try things out. It takes me a while to get there and of course I have the added you know, in time inputs that's needed to digital art which is I think really is my superpower but I can't take my computer with me if I'm out drawing. Yes I could get a tablet or whatever. In fact you know my surface book at the lid is a tablet which I could take but um as it comes apart so you've got the keyboard and the main um main stack of processors and stuff in the base but the screen will detach and it's like um a surface just they you know like the tab the surface tablets but you can't recharge it it has to be docked into the the base so what I'm doing here is I'm adding some white just to lighten up the tip. So I'm sure I could do this in a different way than coloured pencil. But what I'm doing is trying to smooth this out and make it not quite so noticeable. And the light is really, really bad today, isn't it? Do you know what I'm doing wrong here? Just move my curtains back. It's a bit better. Could just be the colour of the paper. But, you know, interesting journey, interesting time. So, um, I think I've done here for you for today. I do need to turn my attention to drawing for the colouring book I'm working on. I did a lovely letter yesterday saying that the um, all the templates I sent off, so there's now 10 done, have been approved and I'm on the right lines. So that's great. Um, that's added to my confidence in what I'm doing after colouring one of the templates in or not completely but enough for me to go yeah this works so I can now carry on and, and get a you know get some sketches done today ready for um, either inking in today or tomorrow I know I've got things on today so my time is limited um, in that respect but I can get on at a pace now I've got it in my head what I can do and, and that things are fine so that's lovely. I've also got a, um, a proposal for me for the next book and the theme of the next book. So I've agreed to that. I think it'd be great. Um, challenging for me, but it's really good. So um, with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me once again, for sticking through 20 odd minutes of, of this. I hope you found it interesting. I hope it's given you some inspiration to, to try different things out. And, and to see whether things work or not. I mean, as I'm looking at this on the screen, as I'm talking here, I really like the white and how it adds that really bright, 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 brightness of it. So I expect by tomorrow I'll have some more samples to show, especially as tomorrow it's up at stupid o'clock for organic food delivery. But, you know, I say that every week and it's not going to change in the, you know, in the foreseeable future. And, um, just bear in mind that all the products I've mentioned, I'm not sponsored for, I'm not paid for in any way. I'm not gifted any product to mention them or place them or use them or review them. These are things that I've bought with my own money and out of interest or, you know, because I like them. And all it leaves me to do is to, oh, if you've enjoyed what you see, don't forget to give it a video a like, thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so because it will help this channel grow and you know I'd like to think I've got things that are interesting to people to say or to show or ways of looking at things that can help you be at peace with your artistic journey and process and be a bit more experimental perhaps I'm, I'm nowhere near as experimental as a lot of people but I do it my own way and um, just take care of yourselves and enjoy the rest of whatever day you happen to be watching this on, no matter what time of that day is. So thank you and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.